Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice homemade exponential equation. So we have 5 to the power x plus 5 to the power 4 over x equals 50. And we're going to be solving for x values. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the solution and also show you a graph at the end. Actually, I'm going to show you two graphs. And there's a reason for that, which we'll find out later. So we have this equation, 5 to the power x plus 5 to the power 4 over x. And that should kind of give you an idea if you are familiar with inequalities, especially what is called AMGM inequality. So anyways, let me, without further ado, let me tell you what AMGM is, and then we're going to use it in our solution. So if you have two numbers, A and B, that are positive, right, their arithmetic mean, which is the sum of their half of their sum or their average, and this number is always going to be greater than or equal to their geometric mean, which is the square root of their product. Obviously, this is just for two numbers. If you have three numbers, then you can go ahead and add them and divide by three to find the average. And their geometric mean is just going to be the cube root of the product. So when you have n numbers, you're going to take the nth root and multiply the numbers together. Make sense? Easy, right? Well, the proof is kind of not that easy for the case n equals 2 and n equals 3. Those are actually really easy inequalities. By the way, AB ha has to be positive by, uh, in this case. So those proofs are fairly easy, especially the first one is like comes from a fact uh, that uh, no square is negative. And the second one is a well-known identity with cubics, if you've done some of the cubic uh, factoring problems that we've done before. Anyways, in the, with the case of n, then you can use induction. Anyways, and uh, you kind of have to distinguish between, I think, uh, n equals even and n equals odd. Anyways, so how do we use that problem? Let's go ahead and take a look at it from these two numbers perspective first. So 5 to the x and 5 to the power 4, 4 over x, as long as x is real, uh, these two quantities are always going to be positive, right? Obviously, if x is complex, that's a different story. But if x is real, then we have the following inequality. Add them up, divide by 2. This is going to give you the arithmetic mean, which is am. And this is going to be the gm. Of course, I'm not referring to this. I'm referring to two numbers. So it is the one on the left and the right. So the arithmetic mean is always going to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is the square root of the product, 5 to the x and 5 to the power 4 over x. Great. Now, this is especially cool because we know the sum. So we can go ahead and divide it by 2. We're given that 5 to the x plus 5 to the 4 over x is equal to 50. So half of that is going to be 25. And then from here, we get the radical being less than or equal to that. But we can add the exponents here, x plus 4 over x. And this should give us, after squaring both sides, 5 to the power x plus 4 over x is less than or equal to 25 squared, because basically what we did here was square both sides and kind of switch sides here. So we have the variable on the left hand side, and this is going to be 625. But 625 is 5 to the fourth power. It's 5 squared squared or 25 squared. So now we have the inequality 5 to the power 4 over x is less than or equal to 5 to the fourth power. And we can safely say from here that if x is positive, then x plus 4 over x is supposed to be less than or equal to 4. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at x and 4 over x, because that should give us something interesting. So let's go ahead and uh, take a note of this and now work with x and 4 over x. So what is the, if x is positive, of course in this case I'm assuming x is positive, the arithmetic mean must be greater than or equal to the geometric mean, as before, right? Just like before, am, gm, okay? But x plus 4 over x, we don't know what it is. We just know it's less than or equal to 4 because of am, gm, right? x doesn't have to be positive in the case, but let's just assume x is positive. And we got another inequality. So we're going to put those two inequalities side by side, and we'll come up with a... Um, decision, okay? We'll come up with a consequence. 
So x and x cancel out, which leaves us nicely with a 2 here. If you cross multiply 2 times 2 is 4, and this gives us x plus 4 over x is greater than or equal to 4. And what does that tell you? When you take it with the other inequality, let me go ahead and copy that here. The top inequality was x plus 4 over x is less than or equal to 4. So by AMGM, if x is positive, then we got two results that seem to conflict each other. Because one of, one of them says, hey, this quantity must be greater or equal to 4. The other one says less than or equal to 4. But when you put it together with the word and, this implies that x plus 4 over x must equal 4. Great. Awesome, right? From an equation, we got an inequality. From two inequalities, we got an equation. Now we're going to use this to solve the problem. But how do you go from this to the original problem? We can find the value of x from here, right? How do you solve this equation? Well, multiply everything by x. That should make sense, right? And then put uh, 4x on the left. And then, yay, this is a perfect square, which means we have a unique solution. And that should be the case. And notice that x equals 2 is a positive quantity. Therefore, if x is positive, it must be 2, right? Again, that's conditional because we haven't talked about the case where x is negative. But I'll tell you what it is, and then at the end, hopefully, when you see the graphs, it'll make more sense to you. Okay? Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and plug this in. So, why does x equals 2 work? Let me tell you that. Well, AMGM inequality is actually an inequality, but we get an equation, and notice that we got an equation from an inequality, which means, and that only happens if the quantities are all equal. So with the AMGM, remember um, I said that with the n numbers, or 2 and 3 numbers, uh, the AMGM can equal each other, actually. But uh, that only happens if all the numbers are equal. So if you have AAA, their arithmetic mean, obviously, is going to be the same as cube root of AAA. Make sense? And this is true for n numbers as well. So from here, uh, if you plug in x equals 2, you're going to get 5 to the second power plus 5 to the second power, which is 25 plus 25. That is equal to 50. So x equals 2 works. But not only that, notice that we get the 25 twice because x is only 2 if x equals 4 over x. In other words, when we have the same power, we split up the 50 into two pieces, 25 and 25, and that kind of makes sense because you have to meet in the middle, which is where they are equal. So from here, we get something interesting, though. x squared equals 4, and this equation has two solutions. One of them is positive. We already got that, but the other one is negative. So you're like thinking, hey, can negative 2 be a valid solution to... Let's check it out. 5 to the x plus 5 to the power 4 over x. If x is equal to negative 2, then 5 to the power negative 2 and 5 to the power negative 2 is going to be 1 over 25 plus 1 over 25. I don't think this is going to add up to 50. It's actually going to be 2 over 25. So unfortunately, negative 2 is not a solution. Maybe fortunately, I don't know. There is no negative solution to this equation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. The first graph, I just wanted to show you that, yay, we got an intersection point, but that's not just intersection. It's actually a point of tangency. Why is the graph tangent? Because our function has a minimum at x equals 2, but only if x is positive. The reason I say that is if you look at the second graph, then we have a piece that's in the negative x section. And as you can see, uh, this uh, will never intersect y equals 50. Why? Because our graph starts at... 0, 1, well, x is negative, but anyways, you get the idea. This is on the graph, right? Is x equals 0 defined? Actually, no, not well defined. What are you talking about? That's an open node, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea. You can take the limit from the left-hand side as, appro as x approaches 0 from the left, y approaches 1. But as x approaches infinity, I mean negative infinity, then something interesting happens. Uh, limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5 to the x plus 5 to the 4 over x. This becomes 1 over 5 to the infinity, which is 0. So this approach is 0. 4 over negative infinity approaches 0. So this approach is 5 to the power 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So our function approaches 1 as x approaches negative infinity, which means it's not going to go up and be able to intersect y equals 50. So we only got 1 positive 
solution, which is at the minimum for positive x values. And this brings us to the end of this video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.